Amen, 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 amen. It's good to be here this morning. Good to see each and every one of you. I believe the word of God this morning. Do you? Amen. Amen. Praise God. It's a good day to praise the Lord and a good day to hear the word. Let's receive our pastor with a big round of applause. Amen for Pastor Blaine. God bless you. Good morning. If you get your Bibles, I want to call your attention to uh, the book of Colossians. Paul's epistle to the church at Colossae. Uh, When you get over in uh, Colossians, Philippians, uh, Ephesians, you get into an area which theologians call the apse or the highest portion of Paul's epistles because the revelation that Paul was given was a gradual Revelation. You see, sometimes we get it twisted when we talk about growing a progress in God. We start thinking that it is necessary for us to grow. And that is true in a sense. But we must pinpoint with accuracy where the growth is. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Uh, God does not change. What changes, Brother Hughes, is our understanding. Paul said, when I was a child, I thought as a child. I acted as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. And so then, uh, the, the, the growth is in our understanding. Have you ever said, oh, I see now? Okay. Well, now, what you seeing have, was the same all the time. But it's the way you saw it that changed. So then, what we have in God as far as our righteousness, our sanctification, as far as in our standing, as far as our wisdom, as uh, 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 our redemption, it was made perfect when Christ died upon the cross. God did not half do us and leave us part to do for us to die daily and for us to grow and for us to this. That. No, 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 no. It was perfectly done when he said that it is finished. My, uh, my part is in coming to an understanding of what he has done, uh, coming to an understanding as to who he is. Uh, Heretofore, God in Christ has been presented to us in a way such as that God was expecting us to make him God. Uh, If you give so much money, then you're going to watch God bless you and give you this and give you that. Let me say this. When you love someone, you don't give them what they deserve. I'll say that again. If there is anybody in your life, you you are not and have not given them what they deserve. But you gave them what you wanted them to have. And that's the difference between loving somebody and using somebody. The folks that you use, and all of us use folk, the folks that you use, It just depends on how they act as to what you give them. You might not even give them a how you doing today if they don't got on your nerve. (laughs) But if it's somebody you love, you know, that little old nappy head boy that won't listen to you. If somebody you love, you go get your last and give it to them. So then, God has not withheld any good thing from us. God in his love, God because God is love. God left heaven, put on sinful flesh, but yet he did not sin. And he sojourned and he he walked the shores of Galilee and he was hungry and and he fell asleep in the hinder part of the ship and and he grieved and he felt sorrow and he cried at Lazarus' (laughs) 
and he did it all for me, that he might work out my perfect salvation. So what was my part? My part is to believe it. Well, in order for me to believe it, I've got to grow past my understanding. Because, Brother Span, the way I understand thing is, don't nobody do nothing for nothing. The way I understand it is, now you must want something. Mm -hmm. When my phone rang, after you get through talking about, hey, how you doing, Pastor? Whatever, I'm waiting to see, what do you want? Because there's only one call out of a hundred. Well, somebody called me and said, well, Pastor, I just want to see how you doing. Every now and then. And so then, my understanding has to grow. You see, I go into this season, and we're still talking about discerning the season. I go into this season understanding what? This is what I understand. Look at your neighbor, look him right there in the eye, and just tell him. Say, I had it twisted. I had it, I, I, I had it twisted. And I didn't come up with it just on my own. I went to church, and y'all told me at church what I needed to do. You see, on this side of the Jordan, I thought that I had to help God. I thought that I needed to do this because God couldn't be God without me. And when I did what I part did, then, then me and God together would talk about how great we are. Every now and then I'd call his name in, but most of the time I'd talk about what I did. Well, you know, baby, I gave, you know, I gave, I gave 10% of everything that I had. And I've been working in the church faithfully all my life and everything. Some of y'all, we can't even end your funeral because we got to talk about six hours about how good you was when you was here. You dead now. What are we talking about? <sighs> I had it twisted. On this side, on this side of the Jordan, on this side of my season, baby, and I thought, that God was waiting. Sometimes I felt like helping God. Sometimes I didn't feel like helping God. You see, because I felt like God hadn't been fair. I felt like, God, you, why, why are you, you doing all this for them and that? And they turned me down on the car. I was trying. You know I need a car. Now, now you, my child in jail. And these folks here don't even pay their tithes. And they child going on to college. And God, you ain't fair. I had it twisted. But when I found out that God was God all by himself. When I found out that he was going to be God, whether I did this or whether if I gave any money, if I came to church, if I did this or did it, God was going to be God because God does not change according to who I am. God has never depended on me to be nothing in order for him to be God because God has something that I desire and it's called integrity. God can never be nothing but God. And that's the problem, Brother Sefer, that he had with Job. Because Job began to question him. God, what Job really was saying was, God, you ain't fair. How in the world you got me going through all this and that? And look how good a record that I've got. I made a covenant with my eyes that I wouldn't even look on a maid. How in the world I'm going through all I'm going through as good as I've been. And God had to let him have his say. And then God said, did he let you have your say? Did he let you have your say? And after you got through saying what you had to say, he said what he said. He had to put you in your place. He said, well, I hear what you're saying, but where was you? Where were you? The same way, Sister Sheila Holloway, that if we ever get any love and understanding for our parents, that we understand. Mom asked him, said, baby, I was here. I'm the one that had the pains to bring you forth, but you got enough nerve to turn around and tell me you grown. That if it had not been for me, if I had just... I told my mama the other day and everything, she always want me to do this and do that work. I said, I ain't getting no pay or nothing like that. Now, y'all know my mama. She said, well, I paid you when I didn't close my legs. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Anything wrong with it, y'all look at her. She said it. So, 
the reason I could not be satisfied, the reason that I could not be successful, the reason that I was always taking the L's, the reason that I could never cross over in that past season was because I had it twisted. I was trying to assist God, and I was assisting God because in reality, I wanted some kind of credit or something for it. I was not willing to apply the cross to my life. I got saved that way, but now I wanted to make my own way. Now I wanted some credit. Now I wanted you to call my name, knowing that he would not share his glory with him. I had it twisted. And I had a whole lot of help, I'm telling you, in the church with that, because they always talked about what I needed to do. I need everybody to give $100. Now, you didn't have no $100 to me. That means you, you won't get no front row seat in heaven like me. You didn't have the money to give. And then you're not as faithful in your attendance and everything. And then you don't do this and, and you don't do that. But I had it twisted. I had it twisted. But you know what? I always thank God that God will change you and take you from glory to glory. He hasn't changed. He hasn't changed, but my understanding of God has changed. He was God all the time. And, and that's the reason, J.B., that when I turned that car over down there on Highway 49, and it had uh, fence prints all on the top of it, and, and I went and sat on this woman's porch and everything, and the police came and got me and took me home, and, and, and the car had turned so many times, and, and I, I was so drunk, and, and I'd be in the club and pull women's wigs off, and their husband didn't kill me, and, and stuff like that. That's why all of that was done to show you, son, you was out your mind. You was out your mind. You don't even remember all of it. But I yet looked over you. I yet protected you. I, went, I yet made a way. When folks on your job had made up their mind they were going to put a trap for you and that you were going to be fired and you wasn't a, I came in and, and made it where they couldn't find the paperwork. They thought they had enough write-ups, but they couldn't find the third write-up. All the time I was trying to show you that I'm God all by myself. All I want you to do is fall back in my arms. All I want you to do is trust me. All I want you to do is know I got you. And I don't need your help, but I, but I had it twisted. I, I had it twisted. He said, Joe, where were you when I told the morning stars to sing? Where, where are you? And then he got real deep on Job, Fred, because he told me, he said, Job, he said, even the heavens are unclean in my sight. I'm God. I dwell in a light that no man can approach. Moses wanted to see his glory because Moses wanted another reason to go on because Moses said, you don't call me man and I don't got out here with these rebellious people. I need some kind of motivation in order for me to go on with these foolish folks. And he said, God, show me your glory. And he loved Moses. Moses was his friend. And Moses was meek, but Moses didn't mean no harm. Moses just said, I'm discouraged. I'm tired. Show me your glory. And God said, look here, Moses. I can't show you my glory. Because if I show you my glory. So you can't share in God's glory. If I show you my glory, you, can, you, you won't make it. He said, but what I'm going to do. I'm going to take you and hide. I had it twisted. I'm going to take you and I'm going to hide you in the cleft of the rock. And my glory is such that you can't see me when I come by. But I'm going to go by and you let you see my hand up. Okay, okay, Lord, they don't understand. That went over about 11 folk here. Let, 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 let me say this right here. You didn't understand God. Let me see. The old people put it like this. You understand it better. By and by, make it a little plain, Lord. Okay, you, you didn't know how good God was until you look back over your. You didn't know how good you were looking at what was happening, but when you look back over your life and saw where God had brought you from, your soul cried out, "Hallelujah, Lord!" It wasn't nobody but you. Others didn't make it. Many went to jail. Many got, many dead. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I got folks that I sat right there and smoked with. I got folks that I did capers and crimes with. They ain't here no more. They gone on. 
but God showed me the hinder part of his glory. I had it twisted. Y'all ready to roll? Colossians 1 and 19. 1 and 19, I believe. Uh, here the Bible says, for it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. Bring me that. All fullness should dwell. So then if we go back up, let's go back up to verse 9. I want to use 19 as uh, an anchor. Thank you. I want to use 19 as an as a anchor that in him dwelt all the fullness. You see, in this season, I can't afford to trust and to hold on to anything but God. But the songwriter says, oh, I got about seven, I got about seven seasons, saints. <laughs> they say, Pastor, you ain't doing nothing but telling the truth. <laughs> the season saints would say, Pastor, He's a mighty good leaning post. It's a, it's, it's a pastor. I, I'm not telling you. I can't give you the verse or the scripture, Pastor. But I'm giving you my life. I know what God did for me. And I want you to know I was almost gone. I, I, my, my mind was gone. I didn't want to do But, but he's a mighty good leaning post. I call on the Lord. And the Lord held me up. God held me up. <sighs> I had it twisted, but not over here. Over here, in this season of my life, Sister Sumter, he gets all the praise, all the glory. Man ain't gonna like me. Man, man ain't gonna embrace me because I'm not giving man no praise. I ain't giving no, it was God that brought me. It was God that healed me. It was God that healed my body. It was God that regulated my mind. It was God all by himself. I didn't come this morning in order to make no man feel good. But I come this morning to give God a crazy praise. I'm coming to the end of 2021. And I come in this morning to throw my hands up and tell God I thank you. God I praise you. God I love you. If it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, where, I know, where would I have been? Oh, you get all the prayer. Over here. Mm. And it's all right. I have to play my little pride now. Because the Bible says that he gives grace to the humble. And so God, I'm not so proud that I can't look back and say, God, I had it twisted. God, I had the wrong idea about it. I had the wrong idea about you. But I'm glad to find out you don't need my help. I'm glad to find out that you're going to be God no matter what I do. No matter how I act. That you're not an Indian giver. And that you're not going to take away my joy. You ain't going to take away my love, my wisdom, my righteousness, my redemption. Uh -huh. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says here, he says in verse, uh, what I want, nine. He said, for this cause, since we also, since the day we heard it, I heard about that you had believed the gospel and that you were saved. He said, we do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will. You see, <clears throat> I told God, this is Lisa Staten, <laughs> I said, uh, I don't want a pastor of ignorant people. God calls pastor teachers. You can't do any better than you know to do it. You don't teach nobody. They really don't know. And, and, and so I'm moving into a season that you got to have a no-so salvation. 
See, God saved you without you knowing anything. You just believed. You believed that without the death, burial, and resurrection, you was lost. And so you took it as your own. And God, through his spirit, baptized you into the body of Christ. But, but, but now that you're over here, look at somebody and say, I had it twisted. Now that you're over here, he don't need you to work to keep your salvation. <laughs> because you didn't get your salvation. And so your salvation is secure. <sighs> but what about your ministry? The Bible says that God was in Christ reconciling himself, world unto himself, giving unto you the ministry of reconciliation. And see, when you think that you got a part, guess who you're thinking about? You're thinking about you. Well, Lord, you know I didn't come to church. Lord, you know I ain't read my Bible. Lord, you know I ain't prayed all week. Lord, you know I didn't put no money. I could have put some money. I didn't put it. Lord, you know I come short. Lord, you know, but, 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 but. but when you get it straight, <laughs> Oh, glory, I'll run up out of here. When you understand that he's God all by himself, when you understand God, it's you that's leading and guiding me. And that's when you take your eyes off of yourself and you begin to allow Christ in you, the hope of glory. You, you allow him to become your wisdom, your righteousness, your redemption, and your sanctification. That's when God begins to do for you what you could not do for yourself. Mm, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> thank you, Lord. That's when you end up being where you're supposed to be, doing what you're supposed to do, when you're supposed to do it. Uh, because it's no longer you, but it's Christ uh, that's inside of you. Uh, and Christ will cause you to be able to exhibit the fruit of the Spirit. Uh, folks, you know don't like you. Folks, you know been talking about you. But you can bless them. Uh, you can bless those that curse you. You can pray for those who despitefully use you. Because it's no longer you, uh, but it's Christ. Tell your neighbor, say, I had it twisted. <laughs> Tell somebody else, but I got it right now. <laughs> I got it right now. <laughs> My eyes been open. <laughs> I'm so glad. I'm so glad to find out that he's God all by himself. I'm so glad to know that he don't need no help. I'm so glad to know that God got it. It wasn't an Isaiah, but it was Lewis O'Neill that said, God got this thing. If he ever told the truth, that's the truth. God got this thing. My finances, God got this thing. My family, God got this thing. My health, God run up out of here. God got this thing. I ain't got to be afraid of the terror by night. Because I know that God Gonna be God all by himself hmm. I ain't got to worry about what my record is You know, you know, Job told God that too Well Lord, you know my record is on high But when you get in God You ain't got no record no more How you know it, Pastor? Because they are there for now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. You lost your identity. I let you run with it a long time. Don't you realize you lost? Get it up. Turn it loose. You ain't no good. But you in Christ now. And everything I got, you got. I got Bible on it. You are of God and I'll join out with Christ Jesus. As a matter of fact, Paul said, you seated together with him in heavenly places. The only thing got to change, Sister Valerie Brown, is my mind. God ain't got to adjust nothing. Only got thing got to change is my thinking. Uh -huh. You see, the seasons have changed. My mind got to change. I got to be able to understand how to operate in this one. The Bible says that in time past, God winked at our ignorance. You see, I got a little granddaughter that's about coming up with three years old. I don't expect her to speak, to operate, and to do like I do little Jeremy who getting ready to turn 12. 
I ain't changed. When she get to be 12, I'm going to be the same. But she going to change. As she grows, her understanding and her abilities will change. I'm still going to be Papa when she get there, if I'm still living. So it is with God. God saved me in 1980. And the, vic and, and the journey, them 25 years from 1980 uh, to tw 2005 when we started Manasseh was a journey where I had it twisted because that's what they was telling me. They was telling me I need to pay tithes. They were telling me I need to take circumcision. They were telling me I need to get water baptized. They were telling me that I need to do this and need to do that and all and, and whatever. But I never did hear what the Lord required. I know what you want. Yeah. And see, when you attend in church, you need to be able to separate and divide what the pastor want and what God wants. Because you ain't been called to satisfy the pastor. And he ain't doing his job. Because he was called a pastor teacher. He was called to do that. No matter how I act, no matter what I do, he was called to do what he do. And as a believer, I'm called to reckon myself as dead, but alive through Christ. So no, I'm no longer uh, uh, led by me, my flesh, but I'm led by the Spirit. <laughs> I'm led by the Spirit. I am led by the Spirit of truth, which will lead me and guide me into all righteousness. I won't lose because the spirit is the spirit of truth. And he will lead me and guide me into all righteousness. But I had it twisted. But that was over there. And now I'm here. That was then. And this is now. Huh? And it's necessary that over here, I have to have the requisite amount of humility in order to walk over here. Because if I ever get to the place where I know and I'm not listening, then the spirit cuts off. Because the spirit will use who he wants in order to get his message to me. Sometimes he talks to me directly through my heart, but most of the time he's going to talk to me through somebody else. And a lot of times it's through somebody I don't want to hear. And I've got to be have enough humility. I had it twisted. I've got to have enough humility over here. Now, what starts my humility it's when I can accept that what I have, I didn't acquire it. Hmm. 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 That's where you get this Republican mindset. I work for it. I did it. You need to do the same thing. Hmm. But you're not taking into uh, uh, account the truth that you did not allow my ancestors to buy that house when it was $6,000 and now the house is worth 600000 So then therefore your grandchildren have 500 some thousand dollars worth of equity. We are not starting off together. We are not on the same, we are, we are not on the Y'all don't like me, I don't care. I don't care. God taking mighty good care of me. God got mad for no man to help me, no man to have nothing good about me. I'll be clean every day. Come back next Sunday. Come back next Sunday. Let me tell you something. I had it twisted. I whined and I cried, just like the man in John the fifth chapter. I got no man to help me. But you ain't never needed no man to help you. You don't need no man to like you. But I tell you what, you do just like that man did in what it would lean on me. He turned that, that table over. Right. You might not like, but you darn, right. you darn well better go respect me. Right. Cause there's gonna be some furniture moving. Right. Thank you, Jesus. I had it twisted. <laughs> Look what he says here. He says, verse 17, and he is before all things and by him all things consist. You don't need the help. When you realize you don't need them, you can sleep better at night. You don't need them people. The Bible says, consist means holding together. 
God is holding everything together. They can try. So I got about three witnesses. They tried to tear your whole little thing up. They told you you weren't going to make it. They told you you weren't going to never come to nothing. I got folks now, I give them hard burn and gas when they see me. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. You laugh, but it's people that it hurt them to see that you made it, that you're doing all right. And they know all they did to try to hold you back. Not only they try to hold you back, then they tried to hold your children back. And, and some of the most cruel people are the children, are the, some of the teachers that our children are up under. Sit up and tell them that they're dumb and tell them that you need to be in special. Tell them all kind of things. But the old people were right, Brother Marcus Hughes, when they said, keep your hand in God's hand. It's all right. It's all right. Over here, in this season over here, I ain't worried about now, Negro. How they think, what they want, what they, what, what everything. Is. I know how to eat peanut butter and crackers. I've had $165 steaks. They didn't taste to me. They didn't taste no better to me than peanut butter and crackers. <laughs> I just want to get full. I ain't got to brag about it, take pictures of it, and put it on Facebook or nothing. I, I thank God for whatever. Whatever you bless me with, God, I just want to be in your, in this season. In this season here, what you think about it don't mean a hill of beans. Over here, God, I mean, I, I, I told y'all this the anchor right here. This the anchor. I'll be 66 in February. This the anchor. We, we, got to, we got to bring it on home. And when I'm, when, when I'm bringing it in, so something, Brian, I ain't got time to be. What you mean, Pastor? I don't care what you're doing. I don't care what you're doing. When you start telling me this and that, and especially I don't care what other folk doing. When you come to me and start talking about this one doing that, that one doing that, and you see my eyes go up above your head, that means I don't went past you. I'm trying to be nice, but I ain't even interested in nothing you talking about. If you ain't talking about helping nobody, you talking about what somebody, whatever, God bless you. God ain't called me to be the judge on nobody. And what I come to find out that when I go to judging people, I don't have all the power run up out of here. I don't have all the facts and I really don't know what I'm talking about when I judge you. We are almost through. He said in verse 20, and having made peace through the blood of his cross. I ain't got to work for me. I ain't got to work to try to make God like me. I ain't got to do nothing in order for God not to be mad at me. Uh -huh. That's when, you know, I promise you, when that's closed now, I'll be at home. I'll be at home. You can't tell me no more. Tell me, come to church. I got to come to church, put on some clothes, and come listen to you talk all of those stuff that you ain't read by your grandmama told you. Tell my God mad at you. God mad at you. My pastor that I had, God bless his soul. I loved him then, I love him now in his grave. But he made the remark that he know, you know, well, we can't, we can't, we can't appoint Brother Bland because he don't pay his tithes. I ain't lose one minute of sleep about it. I'm making three hundred something thousand dollars a year, and I'm finna give you thirty thousand. Where they do that at? Where they do that at? And then you a man too? Y'all know what I'm talking about. But what you had was dependent upon what I do. And today I understand love, Fred, and I understand that if I got to do it, act, and be a certain kind of way and everything, you need to go your way and I need to go my way. <laughs> he says, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. Look at verse 21. And you, he's talking to me and talking to you, that was sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works. I don't know about y'all, but I love sin. The most sin that I could get, the, the dirtier, the nastier that it was. I come up out of a nasty hole with nasty people doing nasty things. <laughs> now I know that Mark is gonna put that on his Facebook page today. <laughs> I come about a nasty hole with nasty things. Then put my name by Pastor Van. 
Don't you do that. No folks gonna think that's what I was preaching about. This. <laughs> but you know what? The thing about it is, you can do so much wrong since the battle around that you begin to look down on yourself. You begin to feel unworthy and feel like that you don't deserve maybe something that some good people. See, I used to think y'all church folk were good folk. And then I, I see y'all on Sunday morning. I've been, been out all night. I'm up there. Mr. Shannon's up there trying to get that last, uh, that last half of paint up there. And I see y'all coming. Now, he had a TV up in there. And there was a gospel show coming. We would watch the gospel show while we drank. But I didn't figure I should probably come to y'all church that morning. But he said we were alienated in our mind. Uh-huh. Uh, by wicked way. Yet now have he reconciled. I had it twisted. God did it all for me. It didn't have nothing to do with me. My wicked acts ain't a dime worth a difference between none of us. Some of y'all just slicker. My mama would tell you this right here. She said, one thing about it now. Now you got first she had Vandal, then she had person. And we were diving, we were just exact polar opposite. I would do something, my concert go to bother me. And before the night was over with, I come back to the back room where they are. She'll tell you, cut the light on. I have to confess, I've been doing this and I've been doing that. <laughs> now, what, per, first about 64, now he ain't confessed yet. <laughs> we ain't got to go that far, we can go right here, this is right here. My wife told me one time, she said, man, no, I don't find it necessary to tell off. <laughs> that really I had really to tell it on her sometimes, didn't be. So I wasn't drinking by myself. We'll leave it right there. Look what he said, 22. And this is how the Bible said you ought to be ready to give a reason for the hope that you have. It's one thing to say something, but it's another thing to have proof. When I was prosecuting, I, somebody, I could know that they had committed murder, but I had to prove it. It's only as good as what you can prove if you've got a personal injury case. If you cannot show causation, if you cannot see the injuries, you may be crippled for life. But if you can't show that the action of the tortfeasor, his actions caused it, then you ain't got nothing. You, you just out. And so then, why do you believe what you believe? Why do you believe that God did it all? Why do you believe that you don't have any part in it? Why do you believe that you are perfectly joined with the Lord as scandalous as you act sometimes? He says in verse 22, in the body of his flesh, through death. And that's the reason he had to die. That's the reason he would not come down. And that's the reason he gave his hands and he gave his feet. And that's the reason that he said, if I be lifted up from the I'll throw all men unto my, that's the reason he told Pilate, no man take my life, but I lay it down. And if I lay it down, I'll pick it up again. That's the reason that while it was dark from the sixth to the ninth hour, signifying the scapegoat who the high priest laid his hand upon his head and sent him far off in the wilderness signifying that Israel's sin had been taken from them as far as the east from the west the north from the south that is the reason that at the end of the ninth hour he took his head and put it in his shoulder and said it is finished it is finished there ain't no part I had it twisted <laughs> ain't no part for me to do I'm not able to carry the load <laughs> that's why he became my savior <laughs> I can't do life <laughs> I tried <laughs> I do better than some <laughs> but I can't do it <laughs> and so he's become my savior I give it all to him <laughs> you, you, you are my savior and he says the reason in his flesh through death what happened to present you. You see, when I accept the unspeakable gift, Mother Davis, Christ presents me. He has believed on my death, burial, and resurrection, and Christ presents me. But you know what? You can't be who you are if you don't know who you are. Now, you can put that one on now. If you don't know who you are, then other people start telling you who you are. 
But when in his flesh through death, it was to present you. And how did he present you? What state were you in? Because this is by faith. This is not by a sight. This is not by experience. Because by experience, in my body dwells flesh, and I serve sin with my body. But by placing my faith into Christ, the Spirit baptizes me into the body of Christ. And so now I get the benefit of what Christ did. Not I had it twisted. I kept waiting on me to do good. I kept waiting on me to get there. I kept waiting on me to make the change. But my part is admitting that I can't change. Not permanently, not 24 hours a day, not seven days a week. I come to church and run all over the church and mess around and them children make me cuss everybody out now. Look at the devil. As high as I was in the spirit, here the devil come. Thank you, Jesus. God got to save them in order for me to be saved. I got one minute, two minutes. He says, in the body of his flesh, verse 22, to present you holy. See, I'm not holy on my own. I'm not holy because of the clothes I wear. I'm not holy because of the music I listen to. I'm not holy because of the actions that I take. He presents, I had it twisted. He presents me holy and what? Unblameable. There's no condemnation in me. Not because I don't act up. Not because I have grown to this state where now I don't do that. No, no, no. He presents me. That's why he gets all the praise and the glory. I don't get any praise or glory for look, look how good you're doing now. Boy, I'll be doing good today. And you catch me tomorrow, I done kick the whole milk bucket over. I'm worse than I was beforehand. But he, to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. Verse 23, if you continue in the faith, grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. This is by faith. The just shall live by faith. A backup Romans and Galatians three times. He said the just shall live by faith. And be not moved away from the hope which ye have heard and which was preached to every creature which is made under heaven whereof I Paul am made a minister. Clap your hands for the Lord, please.